This is uh, our visitor parking area. And I'm loving how I've been throwing seeds out here for a few years now. And the valerian's looking really, really well, as are these, um, oh, I'm gonna be stupid. Oh, I can't remember what these are called. Oh, my little head. That's Robert's, the purple stuff. This is valerian. And I'm experimenting with some irises. There's a very dry iris. It doesn't mind being dry. I've just planted those this year. There's one and a second one there. And there's this blue stuff, which I don't know what it's called, but I love it. And then I have some seedlings that I sowed of uh, um, Catoniaster. So there's one there, and then there's several more along. So I'm hoping the Catoniaster will grow. Over here, this is a, this is the hen run. Everybody's always asking me about the hen run. And I have the Montana growing over it. There's Wisteria Montana and Passionflower. And this um, Judas tree, or as some people call it, the, um, what do they call it? The uh, violet tree or something because its sh leaves are beautiful. And in this bed, there's some irises and thyme, um, uh, peonies and some lilies. And over here, I've just this year planted a climbing rose and there's artichokes and daisies. And then these are more um, iris stagliosa. They flower in the winter. So these are the hens everybody's been asking me about and every day I pick them delicious herbs and things like that they're also fed grains but um, they have to be in a secure location because foxes that are trapped in cities are, are released in the area and they're so tame they come up and will snatch a chicken from right under your feet and that literally has happened to us oh here's yarrow this is another dry weather plant that loves, <coughs> loves it when it's dry. So there's yarrow, and you can see there's also dandelions here, and artichokes, and there's honeysuckle that I've got growing, started planted to grow up. Here's the passion, passion vine that'll grow, the passion flower. <coughs> And there's lots of other things, daisies, primroses, fennel, uh, ladies mantle along here. So it's all planted up around the hen run. So there's a lot of biodiverse stuff around there. But the chickens are kept, sadly, can't be free ranged and are kept in a pen. But every day they're given lots of delicious food that I go out and pick for them whatever the herbs are that are going at the moment. I had to put this mesh up because they were reaching through the fence and eating the plant life, which yes, they're welcome to, to an extent, but I'd also like to have the plant life around um, for the pollinators as well, because those are a multiplicity of seasonal plants that will be flowering at different times of year for the uh, pollinators and insects and things like that. So, yeah, so this, for example, the climbing thing, the wisteria was earlier, now it's the Montana clematis, and then all the rest of the summer it'll be the passion flower flowering up there. And then here's another plantation of trees and shrubs that I have in here that I've been slowly planting on. There's uh, sweet chestnut, beech trees, spindle, um, pheasant eye, St. John's wart, um, da, 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 spindle, I've already said that. Oh, and then over here, this is, this, this is a black uh, elderflower. And then this is pokeweed. And the flowers are amazing. They go this magenta color, pinky color, and then they go, the berries are magenta. So this is, these are gonna flower soon as well. And 
and then these are some wall flowers that are really beautiful. They've been flowering since March, February, March. And then you can see the cow parsley and the long grasses and the silver birch, spindle, cherry, apple plantation in there that I've planted over the last number of years. Slowly but surely, tree by tree. And all the long grasses, uh, all in here, and nettles. So that is, um, and here you can see the spindle. The spindle has flowered and those are the berries that are gonna be fruiting. So yeah, busy times. Oh, and the beautiful smelling lilac. Oh, it smells heavenly. But that's not the dark lilac. I took cuttings of the dark, dark lilac that I have in another location. And there's oak trees down here. And more cherry trees. And that's a big rowan right in front. Sadly, this tree's died. But you'll always have trees that just don't like something. But this rowan is a beautiful one right there. Doing really well. Blooming like crazy. And then over here are the horse chestnuts with their candelabras. So it's all about extending the biodiversity in as small an area as possible. Sort of intensifying the biodiversity maybe might be a way to say it, call it. And yeah, I had to use a lot of weed suppressor here so that everything here can get established because uh, it would have been overwhelmed with brambles and bindweed if I hadn't suppressed the weeds. So no poison's been used. So that, and sadly this has died as well. This is another, um, it just didn't make it, which is really sad. Well, I mean, it looks kind of alive. But, well, it looks alive, but nothing's flowering. Yeah, no, that's alive, but this should be flowering and it's not. Never mind. Anyway, so lots of people have been asking about my chickens and sadly only three of the chicks hatched. So I have a feeling there's something wrong with my incubator. So this is why my hens are penned, is because of urban foxes being trapped and released in the countryside. And these hens, as you can see, have a big run. They have a big house up there. That's where they lay the eggs. And every day I feed them delicious, uh, fresh, vegetables and things like that. Isn't that right, Inka Dink? Inka, you've got, look at you, you're covered in dandelion dander. Aren't you, pup? Dandelion dandered pup. So here's everybody. Pepperson. You're a good boy. Yeah.